right, so we are going to go ahead and get started. So thank you guys for joining us today. We're happy to have Ellie Saul here, and she's going to talk about everything you need to know to enroll in Medicare benefits. For those of you on Zoom, please put your questions in the chat, and I'll share them with Ellie. And for those of you in the room, when you ask your questions, I'll repeat them so everyone who's on Zoom can hear them, and then Ellie will answer. So Ellie, for the past decade, has been teaching Medicare classes and helping financial advisors with health, health protection analysis for their clients. She believes teaching Medicare is a calling and that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. She's passionate about providing educational resources for her students without promoting a specific company or product in her classes. Knowledgeable and enthusiastic, she teaches with simple illustrations and relevant stories to make learning the ABCDs of Medicare fun. So welcome. I'm going to turn it over to you. This is going to be great. Okay. Um, welcome to the ABCDs of Medicare. I hope you're ready for a phenomenal Medicare day. Did everybody get a handout that looks like this with a little number seven on the top? <laughs> And I sent them to the Zoom people yesterday. Oh, on top of it. Thank you so much for the work. I love to see if Fort Worth and I cannot say enough good about the library and the library system. And not to toot my own horn, but I am a library expert. I've been teaching in libraries for 10 years. And I've got to tell you, if, if you're in this area, you're blessed. This, this is a phenomenal library system. So super grateful. Uh, Medicare literacy is a rarity. <laughs> I always say when you get ready to get on Medicare, it's kind of like a treasure hunt. You know, there's good stuff. There's good stuff to be had. You just have to know which parts of what you're reading is a map and what is just advertising. Because a big majority of what you hear on TV and what you see on the computer is advertising. Um, so we're gonna cover some of the other side, the side that's 100% educational. Um, one of the really cool prerequisites of getting to teach this class is that I can't sell you anything. So if you came here to buy something, I hate to disappoint you, <laughs> nothing for sale. Um, we're also audited by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid to ensure the quality of the educational resources that we provide. Um, you've heard, I do 100 hours of free public community education every year, so you get one of those today. I hope you love it. <laughs> um, you're gonna love Medicare, okay? There's a lot of things that make it sound confusing and overwhelming and even scary. And in my experience, most of what makes you feel overwhelmed is not even really referring to Medicare. Medicare is brilliant, okay? <laughs> most people don't say that right out the gate, but it is brilliant. Um, if you were born between 1952 and 1962, you're going to live longer than anyone ever has. So what do you want to be when you grow up? First time I asked that question, um, I had a woman in the front row. I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she raised her hand and said, healthy. I thought, okay, that's the right answer. <laughs> no matter who you are or where you are, we have that in common, right? Um, we are living longer, healthier lives than ever before. There's more men alive today over 80 years old than have ever lived in the history of our nation. Um, have you ever been to Walmart? You ever heard of it? Yeah, at Walmart, if you go to the greeting card aisle, they have birthday cards for 100th birthday. Walmart's not really in the business of just being adorable and cutesy like maybe Mama Bear would be, but there's a market, okay? There's a market for 100th birthday birthday cards. And that's very exciting because science has advanced and medicine has advanced and we can outlive things that we used to not be able to. But we have to be able to afford it, right? And that is exactly what Medicare does. When we need it the most, you get rights for undeniable, guaranteed issue 
coverage, um, that's usually better than anything you've ever had before. Most of the time when someone begins Medicare, they have better coverage than they've ever had, usually paying a lower premium than they've ever had to. Doesn't that sound like good news? <laughs> okay, so if you are following along, we'll jump right in to the beginning. You may notice on the top of the paper first, there's a little number seven there, okay? So there's two guides that I want you to know about. One of them is called a guide to health insurance for people with Medicare. This happens all the time. People are like, man, this is so complicated. I wish there was a guide. Well, there is one. Medicare just has two sides. Okay, so on the one side, we have 100% not for profit original Medicare. Not a lot of dollars on the education side. On the other side, we have 100% for profit private insurance companies just pouring money out like it's nobody's business. <laughs> okay, so this is a guide that's available to you, and you can get it by going to um, ssa.gov, that's the Social Security Administration website, um, or Medicare.gov. When you go to these websites, I do want to warn you, these advertisers are getting smarter and smarter every day, and there's about infinite ways that you can accidentally click the wrong button and end up in a black hole of advertising <laughs> that you may not want to be in, so um, we can definitely make these resources available for you. This is page seven of this little guide is what you're looking at. I've not reinvented the wheel. I've just made a photo of them. Page seven of this one. Most of us have at least seen this one, right? Medicare and You 2022 book. We're on page five of this one, okay? So the first note I want you to take at the very top of your paper is your start date. When do you get to start Medicare? That's why you're here, right, to learn. <laughs> Everyone becomes eligible on the first day of the month that you turn 65, unless you were born on the first. Anybody born on the first? Just in case, if you were born on the first, you go back one whole month. Isn't that cool just for being born? My father-in-law's birthday is May 1st, so he starts Medicare April 1st, and I was a little bit more excited than him, but I got limited material, I guess you could say. So the first note I want you to write down is your start date. Now, there are times that someone may become eligible prior to that date if they have had a permanent disability for 24 consecutive months or a specific diagnosis, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, kidney failure, things like that. So even if you've had Medicare because of a different reason prior to your 65th birthday, I still want you to write down the first day of the month that you turn 65, because that's going to mark for you some super cool guaranteed insurability. That is so amazing. In my field, they call it a golden ticket. A golden ticket because nobody can turn you down, right? You can get whatever you want, no matter your health, past, present, or potential future. Also a golden ticket because there's one. You get one golden ticket, okay? Spend it wisely. Okay, so for me, for example, my birthday's in December, so if I was writing on my page, I would put 12 one. okay? Now, how in the world am I going to sign up for Medicare? It depends. <laughs> if you're already drawing Social Security, and that includes a survivor benefit, also called widow or widower benefit, um, a spousal benefit, um, SSI, Social Security Disability, it even includes railroad retirement benefits. If you're drawing any of those, you can take a deep breath and relax because you're already signed up. That's it. You're done. You did great. Now what you have to do is go to the mailbox, okay? They're going to send you your card automatically. You should have it in the mailbox three months before your start date. So if I was already drawing, I should have it by like the weekend. Right, last weekend, I should have had my card in there already. Um, and they're really picking back up. That was slowed down a little bit through the past two years, but I've been getting great reports lately that it's back on the right schedule, okay? In fact, I spoke with someone who received it at the end of August, so starting in December. So that may, and, and it used to be like clockwork. 
you know, in that system. So um, that makes me feel really good about awesome, wonderful Medicare, getting back on track with everything. What about if you're not drawing Social Security? What about if you don't want to retire? You don't have to retire. You don't have to draw Social Security to begin Medicare. You are eligible for Medicare to be your primary health insurance from the first day of the month that you turn 65, whether you want to retire or not, whether you want to start drawing your benefit or not. I've already told you you're going to live longer than anyone ever has. So as far as the math goes, if we just look at a big old computer screen, it might make sense for everyone to wait until they're 70 to draw <laughs> because you'll need all that money with all the life that you have left to live and that's a little joke it's not advice okay <laughs> this is not advice or recommendation or an endorsement it's just you know general educational purposes but um you don't have to draw yet okay so what do you do well you sign up right now you can do that two ways you can go on ssa.gov and make a my social security account Everyone should do that for homework anyway. Um, anybody with a social security number can create one of those. Sometimes it, the earlier on you do it, the more likely you are to keep up with your earnings, make sure everything is correct on that statement. Um, but also that would let you know if they've got something incorrect. <laughs> I've seen I've seen some things. I've seen birthdays wrong, <laughs> names wrong, where things just take a little bit longer, but the earlier you start in that process, the easier it is for someone to come and help you get back on track, okay? Um, if you have a My Social Security account, when you log in, as soon as you're eligible to be able to enroll in Medicare, it just, it's gonna give you a new button that says apply for Medicare. <laughs> it's that easy, one, two, three, okay? Simple application process. Um, you'll just click start a new application right on the computer. The computer is the easiest way, I say, to do this and everything just go very smoothly. It's the most automated way to get it taken care of. So if this was me, you can do that three months before your start date. Let's say I wasn't drawing yet. Well, I wouldn't get it in the mail. I'm not automatically signed up, but I have my social security account. So today, because it's after September, I'd already have a button that says apply for Medicare and I would just push it. <laughs> Ta-da, class dismissed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, if you need help with that process, of course, we're you know available to help you or um, walk you through it. I think you'll find that it's, it's pretty simple. Just know that it's through the Social Security Administration. Okay, it's not through Medicare.gov where you actually sign up, but that's a tricky one. Um, you can technically, legally, without penalty, do that three months before your birthday, the month of, or up to three after. However, <laughs> the day that you sign up is going to impact the day that you get to begin. So if we go back to my example, as long as I sign up on the computer anytime before this date, <laughs> so anytime between September 1st and November 30th, then I need to start on 12-1. If I sign up in December, I have to wait one month. If I sign up in January, I have to wait two months after that. If I wait two months, it's three. So it just kind of kicks your start date down the road a little bit. Um, and that may or may not be a big deal to you. There are several publications that are put out by the Social Security Administration and Centers for Medicare and Medicaid that recommend beginning this benefit when you are first eligible. Um, but of course, there are exceptions to every rule. So we're just going to cover blanket class that works for absolutely everyone. Okay. And we might talk about some little examples in between. Everybody okay on when you get to start? Yeah. Okay. So in addition to signing up on the computer, you can make an appointment. Yesterday... <laughs> There were issues with the national social social security phone number. Um, if you plan on getting someone to assist you for right now, at least in this area, um, they're not doing in-person appointments. 
for Medicare enrollment yet, but they will do phone appointments. So if you can get through, my best advice to you would be to call your local office. Um, if you need help getting that number, you can reach out to us too, because if you call the national number, they'll just tell you to call your local office. <laughs> Those appointments that they're setting right now for Medicare are phone appointments, okay? So if you're comfortable with that, great. As for me, I, I gotta, I, I have to see it. I have to touch it and feel it and know what I'm doing. If I'm just listening to somebody, it's harder for me. But we all learn differently. That's two. Then there's a bonus way. This may be the way that I would go about it. Um, the bonus way is now that the social security offices are open, and wonderful. <laughs> and the reason, by the way, that that phone system gets messed up is because you have to think about the hundreds of millions of people who get benefits through Social Security. And Medicare is one tiny sliver of a world of benefits that they coordinate at very low overhead. Um, but the bonus way is you can go to the office. You can show up in person. If it was me, I would go on a Tuesday morning in the middle of the month and take a box of donuts. <laughs> Nobody's nice to these people. <laughs> because it's such a hard job. I mean, there's no way one person can know all the answers. But the Social Security Administration is a wonderful public service that we pay for with our tax dollars if you use it correctly. So the best way to approach the Social Security office in my experience has been if you know what you need to have done and the resources are public information it's a treasure hunt but they are public information and you call them or visit them and tell them what you need done and you have a form number and use their language flawless you will get exactly what you need every time they are not financial advisors they are not health advisors. <laughs> so a lot of times people get frustrated because they call and say, well, when should I call my social security? Or when should I sign up for Medicare? Or how should I sign up for Medicare? When they can only handle so many things, right? So when you call up there, if you already know what you need done, or if you show up in person with donuts, no, don't my attention, no, I'm kidding. Yes. Represent the social security office. So it depends on your zip code. Um, I'll we can look it up after class, and I'll show you, or I'll show you how to look it up. Good question. There's a zip code locator on SSA.gov. Um, there's several local offices, and you just go to whichever one your zip code says. Sure. Good question. Um, okay. So is everybody okay now on when to sign up and how to sign up? So I, we have a question online yeah. that might be a little early still, but um, I'm planning to retire in January of 2023. If I sign up during open enrollment, which I'm assuming is company's open enrollment, um, October 15th through December 7th, can I have Medicare in addition to my employer's health plan? It depends. So there are a few things that I would have to know to answer that question for that person, and I can speak with them um, directly or write back the exact answer for them. Here's one thing you don't have to be concerned about. Just because it deals with Medicare, you may not even have to worry about that enrollment period. It may have nothing to do with you. If your retirement date is set, you can use that date, and it will give you what they refer to as a set I call it a silver ticket, okay? <laughs> um, that stands for special enrollment period. It's like a special window that you get. Um, you can apply for your Part B by itself. The form for that is a CMS 40B, <laughs> and you're going to need a CMS L564. See, it's super easy <laughs> for your employer to fill out so that you're not penalized. Um, there is a way to get this done. Don't, here's what I want you to do. And this is the answer that I'm most concerned with you receiving from this long explanation. <laughs> Don't stress out about open enrollment until you have to. Okay, that time will come. When you have something else going on, like your birthday, your birthday trumps everything. And I know it's confusing. My mom, her birthday's in February. Last year, during open enrollment, she called me in tears. 
um, stressed out asking me if she messed up already or haven't got her stuff done yet. And I was like, what, what is she talking about? It's all the commercials, all the mail that you get that says, hurry up, you're gonna miss your enrollment window. Um, that October 15th through December 7th, which who knows on knowing the date, that is very impressive. Um, have you been in one of my classes? No. Um, that date is significant, but for you, it's not gonna play a role. So the answer is yes, you can, you can do that. And Texas is the only state actually that allows you to have both at the same time. It's a great save altogether, okay? But I will address them one-on-one um, -on -one just because I don't yep. want to give out information. That I put the I put the your your website in the chat so they can. MamaBearMedicare.com. Yep. I do little videos every week because Medicare is a big old topic. Okay. Um, we're good on how to sign up and when to sign up. Yes? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Now, what I want you to do is take your pen and draw a line right down the middle of the page where it says four. And don't feel bad about doing this. The 2022, page seven. <laughs> has a line. I don't know if they came to my class or <laughs> but anyway, draw a line. Okay. You're not you're not breaking anything. I just want to help you see it as simply as possible. So the reason I want you to draw a line is because when you leave here, I want you to remember you do have to make a decision. Okay. It is either or, but there is public information that can help you make a confident decision. In fact, when he was 65, he just declared bankruptcy, <laughs> had a nasty divorce, and sources on Facebook and Wikipedia, so I know the truth, say that at 65, so just imagine up here, a bully sitting in the back of class or at home online by himself, depressed, because sources say that he was so depressed that he was suicidal. So just imagine a fear, so broken hearted and painless, so desperate for cash, he got a part-time job at a service station. And at that station, two years later, came up with an original recipe that we've all heard of, started selling fried chicken out of a gas station and the rest of the day is history. I tell that story because if you think about what someone can do when they have nothing, except for desperation to go make some money at a gas station, right? Imagine what's possible for you. You're gonna live longer than anyone ever has. And you have way more going for you already than what he did, right? So really dream big. What do you want to do when you grow up? We're going back to Medicare, I promise. But we'll start with the original recipe. That is like Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Original limited material. It gets worse. <laughs> okay, so original Medicare has two main parts. A and B. Okay. A and B combined covers a little over 50% of your total health costs, which between 65 and heaven, we spend a little over $18,000 per person per year on medical costs. Not you, but your peers, the average, you know? <laughs> um, so that could be a significant difference if we know we can count on Medicare for about half of it. Now, original Medicare is a type of insurance. Insurance is not a cuss word, right? It makes you want to cuss sometimes, go proud, but <laughs> it's just a way for you to get someone other than yourself in exchange for a premium or, you know, a dollar amount um, to pay for your medical expenses. So you're just transferring that risk over. Since Medicare is a type of insurance, we're going to talk about premiums. Premium means the amount that you pay to buy the insurance. And we're going to talk about deductibles. The deductible means the part that you have to pay before your insurance pays when you actually end up using it. Okay. 
So for part A, part A on your little paper, it says hospital insurance and it does that, but it also helps with hospice. That's end of lifetime, skilled nursing, um, home health. It does not cover long-term care. Okay, long-term care means someone's moved in, right? Or lost so many activities of living. Skilled nursing means you're there by doctor's orders, you're showing improvement, and there is an end date for your care, okay? Part A has a premium. Don't panic and don't even write it down because people get really scared when I say it. <laughs> But the national average, I mean, the national standard premium for Part A is $499, which is a lot of money, right? But as long as you or your spouse has worked at least 10 years in America and paid your taxes for Medicare, you can raise your hand if you're at home, we're giving you a high five, <laughs> because you will be paying $0 when your benefit begins. That's not because it's free. I made a video about that. Some people call it free. I think it is not free. It is so expensive. But it's so worth it. And when you start your benefit, it's $0 for you because you've already paid it. So your whole working life, when you see those taxes coming out for FICA or Medicare, this is what you're buying. Okay, you're pre-purchasing a portion of your retirement health insurance. And now you get to reap the reward that you've been sowing into. That's one part we got right. I don't know about you, but I would much rather pay as I go while I'm working than try to come up with $500 a month when you're not working, right? So congratulations if your premium for that is $0. If you have specific questions about your circumstance, um, I am well-read in that area. My parents immigrated to America when I was a young child. So the immigration stuff, I got you. Um, and also, I've got clients who either didn't pay into those taxes because of how they were advised for whatever reason. Um, and then I also have some who immigrated to America later on in life. So there's a way to get you covered, okay? <laughs> and if you have specific questions about that, I'll be happy to answer them. All right, zero dollars. Now, Part A has a deductible. Y'all remember what deductible is? what you have to pay before they pay when you use it. The Part A deductible is special, okay? If you have original Medicare, the way that it works is, it's a 60-day benefit period deductible that either the patient or their Medigap, also called Medicare supplement, the little box on the bottom, could have to pay multiple times a year. You heard me right. It could be due more than once, which is just, a lot of information, but you also heard me wrong. You can actually transfer that risk. So there's a chance that you could never have to pay this deductible. The Part A 60-day benefit period deductible this year is $1,565. That either the patient or their Medigap could have to pay multiple times a year. So the way that this works is, let's say someone goes into the hospital. Okay, either them or their Medicap pays it. They don't care who pays it as long as it gets paid. They get treated, they get better, they get released. Anytime that same patient is out for 60 consecutive days and then goes back in, either them or their Medigap has to pay it again. Okay, so that's a little bit different than most of the insurance we're used to until Medicare time, um, but that's just how that part works. Now, one of the most amazing things about original Medicare is when that deductible is met, part A is 100%. That's better than most major medical insurance I look at every day of my life. <laughs> um, in fact, at best, I may see an 80-20 after a deductible is met, or I'm, back in the day, maybe a 90-10. There are very few regular old insurance companies that will do that. 100%, that's pretty awesome. They pay 100% in a skilled nursing facility after the deductible's met until day 20, okay? Day 21, either the patient or their Medigap pays 194.50 per day. They pay 100% in the hospital after the deductible's met until day 60. 
Day 61, either the patient or their bedding app pays 389 per day. Day 90, that doubles to 788. Okay, so that sounds like a big dollar amount. It sounds like a lot of out of pocket expense. But remember, everything you've listed so far, someone else can pay for you if you'd like. Okay, so that's part A in a nutshell. A little bit more than just free hospital insurance, ain't it? <laughs> okay, then we come to part B. Part B is amazing. Here's the disclaimer. Your premium may be different than this, okay? But I am sharing the standard premium for part B. So go ahead and write down $170.10. Less than 7% of us, of y'all, pay a different amount than the standard. Um, and there's different reasons for that. Someone may be eligible for Medicare and Medicaid at the same time, in which case those premiums are taken care of. There's also Medicare savings programs that will pay that premium if someone qualifies. And there's an income-related monthly adjustment amount if someone is... Um, still earning a great deal of income. <clears throat> if you've ever received an IRMA letter, income related monthly adjustment amount, don't pay the letter. It's not a bill, it's just a letter. Um, the POMS, like the instruction manual for social security literally says that when they send that letter out, it's to trigger an appeal. So the easiest appeal that I have ever gotten to file has honor of filing is an SSA 44 form that can help you um, not have to pay that extra charge. So if you have questions about that, also let me know. Blah, blah, blah. Most of us, 170 a month, okay? That's just it. If you're drawing at Social Security or Railroad Retirement Benefit, this is just going to get cut out of your check. You won't even see it. You don't have a choice. That's how it works, right? If you're not, remember, you do not have to retire if I have Medicare. You do not have to start drawing your social security benefit to have Medicare as your primary health insurance. But if you're not drawing yet, they're going to send you a bill. Okay, it'll be a quarterly bill to begin with, which means three months at once. That's another reason why it's so important if you're not drawing yet that you do this early, the earlier on the better, because some of those bills I've seen have five months worth of premium on it. And that can be overwhelming for anyone. They don't advertise them, but you don't have to pay the whole amount. <laughs> it is a monthly premium. It's your right to pay it monthly. You can even use existing funds from an HSA to pay that, which is pretty cool. If you have an HSA, you're pretty excited right now because that's wonderful news. If you're not sure what it is, you probably don't have one. And once you're eligible for Medicare, the IRS doesn't really allow you <laughs> to continue making contributions unless you have a younger spouse loophole. All right, but you can use your dollars or a spouse's dollars to pay this premium. There's a form that you can even fill out to make that premium monthly and you can set it up automatically if you want to, okay? What is that 170 a month gonna buy you? Oh, think of a lot more than nearly $1,000 a month if someone like me is not a Medicare yet. <laughs> Part B is gonna help with doctor's visits, Specialist visits, any kind of outpatient physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, if anybody wants a stroke or anything like that. Durable medical equipment, that's walkers, rollators, CPAP machines, diabetic testing supplies. Y'all part people even pay for insulin if someone is insulin dependent and they use a pump. The pharmacy does not advertise that. So if you or someone you know uses a pump and you're paying for insulin out of your own pocket, if you have original Medicare, contact me or an advocate like me um, to get you some help to get that paid for because that can change somebody's whole life, right? If you self-administer, that's part D and we'll get there, but a pump. Yes. You say if you have insulin, you bring them then you see pump, then plan you pay. What about if you have using the series? Insulin injections. Yeah. If you self, that's that's what I meant. If you self-administer, that's part B. And we'll get there. We're not there yet, but we will get there. And interestingly enough, a really awesome law just got passed that will make that more affordable than it's ever been. 
So yeah, good stuff in the Medicare world. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, um, durable medical equipment. How about ambulatory services? So I say if it's an emergency, right? Part B will pick you up and take you to part A. <laughs> Get it? Okay, so um, if you have ever experienced this, you know what I'm talking about, but before Medicare time, it is not uncommon at all for a hospital and an emergency room to share a parking lot and be owned by different entities. So that could mean different networks. Maybe you've heard that word if you've ever had health insurance. <laughs> that may be why you've heard stories of people going over here to the ER and getting bust over there for whatever they had to have done. Um, sometimes if you follow the dollar in that case scenario, you know why it's a network situation. If you have original Medicare, guess what? You don't have to think about that. Part A and Part B are going to share a parking lot and cover different parts. But as far as the network consideration goes, on any given day, 93 to 97 percent of providers of all categories accept original Medicare. Um, on the hospital side, it's like 99 plus. And there's a really good reason for that. In America, we are so blessed that over 80% of income in the medical field in America comes from services rendered to someone 65 or older, which means mathematically, if they don't take Medicare, they're not gonna make enough money to stay open. That's awesome. That means they'll take you. Not only does that mean they'll take you, it also means they're going to be the very best at doing what you're statistically most likely to need when you're most likely to need it. Because it's what they do most often. And that is why we're living longer than ever before. It's wonderful, isn't it? But we have to be able to afford it. So with original Medicare, the network part, you can take out of your mind for the most part. If you're in the emergency room, part B is going to take care of you if you get treated and released. If you spend the night, if you get checked in, you're rolling over into part A territory, part A rules. Okay? Um, that's a lot, man. Then part B goes above and beyond. <laughs> a lot of major surgeries nowadays are outpatient. Those outpatient surgeries are all going to be part B. I'm not making this up. But if I was hearing myself tell this, I would think I was making it up. I have a client who had outpatient hip replacement. I don't know why that seems like a really big deal to me. That is like really advanced <laughs> in science. So that means that statistically we heal better at home, right? But that also means that there are some major big dollars that could be getting covered over here. Part B also helps take care of things like cancer treatments, okay? So chemotherapy, radiation, transfusions, dialysis, you name it. That's a lot of coverage, huh? Part B has a deductible. Remember what deductible is? It's what you have to pay before they pay. The deductible this year is only $233 for the whole year. It's an annual deductible. This will feel more like other insurance that you have, except for how small it is. <laughs> Once you meet that deductible of 233, Medicare pays 80% of everything I've just listed and in some of fees that they approve, and either the patient or their Medicare pays the rest. Now, they're not going to stay open if they don't take you, but that does not mean that they have to accept Medicare assignment. So you may be notified that your facility does not accept assignment. Don't ever let that scare you. All that means is they can charge a little bit more. Okay, they're capped at 15% over and above what Medicare approves, in which case either you or your Medigap will pay a little bit more. Okay. Um, the good news is with original Medicare, everything that we've talked about so far is public information and transparent. Original Medicare has an operating cost or an overhead of less than 2%. You know what that means? That means every dollar we pay in taxes, every dollar you pay in premium, about 98 cents of it goes to actually pay for someone's care. 
We got it right. That's what I want my health insurance to do, right? Not only does it cover that much, and not only do our dollars actually go for care, the way that it's set up is universal. That means it's the same for every person who has it. There's no discrimination or different rule for you over here and you over there. Not only that, it is transparent in that there's public information that not only shows you who accepts it, it shows you who accepts assignment. If they don't take Medicare, they get on a naughty list. <laughs> in 10 years in the state of Texas, I've encountered one place and I will not say where it was or what the, well, I'll tell you the circumstances. Upon further investigation, they were, they were being investigated for Medicare fraud. So it's not like they were saying, oh, we don't want to take Medicare. If you talk to some insurance billing people at a doctor's office or hospital, Medicare is where it's at. If you have original Medicare, that they want you because they know exactly how it's going to pay. It's a system. Everybody understands it, right? So that in that particular case, it wasn't that they didn't want Medicare. They were trying to steal right, from Medicare. So Medicare didn't want them. But that is public information. Kind of like an audience. <laughs> And it is a treasure hunt because you kind of have to know how to get to all these places. Um, have you ever had health insurance like that? That's the same for absolutely everybody who has it that doesn't pay their CEO um, 30, 40% of the profit, right? Isn't that fantastic? So, anyway, original Medicare, we have that part right. Um, all right. Let's talk about part B. We'll come back to something I'll take in here in just a minute. Okay, D. When you think about D, I want you to think about drugs. D stands for drugs, okay? I say D also stands for date. You wanna date the drug plan, don't marry them. There is some fantastic legislation that has been a decade coming that is so exciting for this. And every year I've been doing this, part D has gotten better. So I'm very excited to tell you that I have resources that you can read up on or listen up on on my website because it's a whole nother um, awesome part of Medicare that's changing literally January 1, 2023. So um, I can tell you that it's going to make it better than it's ever been. 24 is going to be even better. So um, there's dreams coming true over here. The basic concept of Part D will stay the same. Part D is prescription drug coverage. There's over 30 plans in the state of Texas. They work the same way. So they have the same skeleton, right? But they have different formularies. So that means they have different premiums. That's what you pay every month. For this year, you can look at anywhere between less than 10 bucks a month all the way up to over 100, depending on the plan that you choose. Um, the cool thing about this is that you're not locked in, right? You date your drug plan. So that October 15th, December 7th deadline, once you have prescription drug coverage, every year you get to review it. Your mama bear client, we do this for all our clients. We want it done, right? We'll buggy. Um, but we review this and just make sure you're still on the right track. One of the reasons that I'm excited about Part D and have been since I started in this field is because for the first time in your life, when you're eligible for Medicare, you can pick your own. You don't have to take what everybody else has. Can you imagine going to your HR person and saying, can I get somebody back? I only take one stat. No, it doesn't matter what you're taking. Everybody gets the same coverage, right? With Medicare, it's customizable. So... Don't buy a plan because your neighbor has it. It might not work for you. Don't buy a plan. Heaven forbid, if somebody's trying to sell you something, anything, Medicare related, and they don't at the very least know what you're taking, there's something for that, okay? And not for you. And there is a special place where it can be, there could be something good in it for both of y'all, <laughs> right? So um, one way that you can make sure you make a great choice here, and I don't want to overcomplicate it, but I do have many clients who pay little to nothing for their maintenance medications, okay? So um, what I do before somebody begins their awesome Medicare journey, 
We have a Medicare Eve appointment. So I plug all of your medication in on the government database. The database is simple. Once you get used to it, I've got it on my cell phone. You have access to the database. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to get there. But when you get there, you plug in your medications, you put in your zip code where you live and the pharmacy that you prefer. Okay, if you don't have someone like myself helping you with this process, you have access to go look at it yourself by going to medicare.gov um, and searching for drug plans. Hear me when I say, there are infinite buttons that you can accidentally push and get in a black hole of releasing your information in the wrong place. <laughs> so make sure that that's where you are before you start putting in information. If it asks for your phone number or your email address, even your name, you're not, you're not in the right place, okay? So to get on that database, all they need, drugs, uh, pharmacy, zip code, that's it, okay? Um, and it is awesome, and you do get to pick it every year. A for hospital, B for doctors, date your drug plan. Now we can take your pen and draw a heart. That's right, a heart around the box on the bottom that says Medicare supplement or Medigap. The reason I want you to draw a heart is because I want you to remember when you leave here, there is another right that you get that you've never had when you begin original Medicare. You have the right to marry your coverage. What do I mean by that? You can actually buy guaranteed renewable coverage. You've never had that right. What that right means to you is you, not only do you pick what's covered and you're guaranteed to be accepted, they are contractually obligated to cover you from the day that you start until heaven. They can never drop you and they can never change your coverage. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, in the great state of Texas, you can buy one for anywhere between 50 bucks a month all the way up to 200, um, depending on the coverage that you need. And again, there's no one size fits all. I think that everyone deserves to have an individual um, consultation and spend some time to make this decision, <laughs> big deal, okay? So you're gonna look at anywhere between about 50 bucks a month all the way up to 200. When you're turning 65, there's about 100 different carriers in Texas that have these plans, okay? Um, and you'll hear people say, they're all the same, get the cheapest one. And if they were all the same and you should get the cheapest one, I don't think that those two cents would be wasted on coming up with a guide to choose one every year, right? So in this guide on page 11, or in this guide on page 76, I think I read these too much or something. <laughs> so we got page 11 on this one and page 76 on that one. Um, you will see a list of different standards of coverage. They are standardized and that's great, that protects you. That does not mean they're all the same, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna have minimum standards and that's awesome, you want that. Um, that book from the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid says, however, the least expensive one will likely become the most expensive to own in a lifetime because some of those companies um, put out very low rates called introductory premiums for the first year. Um, every other year, they have to file actuarial data with the State Department of Insurance. So um, it makes a difference in the dollars that they put up. So just be very wary if someone calls you or stops at your door. <laughs> and tries to sell you something with language like girl thing get the cheapest one all right um when you're turning 75 there's less than a dozen i would say half a dozen depending on where you live what does that tell you they're not all the same right you probably don't want to get the cheapest one so how do you pick one this book tells you on page 26 and 27 three things that you can do to make a good decision. You're going to be empowered today. You're going to make a wonderful decision and feel awesome. 
about the coverage that you have from the day that you start until heaven. Um, page 26 and 27 says you can do three things. You're already doing number one. Guess what it is? No, come to the library. <laughs> Go to the library. Why would it say that? <laughs> well, because I'm contractually obligated <laughs> to be educational, and I'm not joking. That's for real. We have a I'm the Medicare literacy advocate, okay? So I'm not selling you anything. There's a there's an agreement and the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid to be called educational, they can audit us. So we kind of open ourselves up to a little bit more um, accountability. But the library is a fantastic resource for many things. They have computers in there. They have um, people who can help you, guide you through getting on the internet if you need help with that. They have resources. Like, this is number two, ratings. You can look at the company's financial stability ratings on page 26 or 27, depending on the year you're looking at. It mentions this little publication right here. That's actually one, one volume that I bought online uh, from a different public library. Isn't that cool? So these volumes come out every single year by a company called Weiss, W-E-I-S-S. Weiss is a third party that rates insurance companies based on their financial stability. Weiss doesn't take money from them. Weiss releases a safe report in the form of a volume every single year that covers every single state <laughs> and tells you the safe companies to choose from, okay? Um, they will not put a company on the safe list unless it's B plus rated or higher. They do an audit of insurance companies. See how well they're paying claims, report that back to the public in the form of a letter grade. If you take over a hundred, okay, and they've got a, another few reports that you can purchase because they don't accept money from insurance companies, but um, I run the Texas, Alabama, this is, um, several other states, Medigap list, and it shows you in your state the listed carriers, you can do it every month if you want to, <laughs> um, that have a B plus or higher rating. So in Texas, for example, you got over 100 to begin with, B plus or higher, less than a dozen. That'll help you make the call right there. Okay. Third way to pick a good one, the State Department of Insurance. Texas has an awesome State Department of Insurance. They have fantastic public information. It's just a little bit of a treasure hunt. Okay, you gotta know how to find it. I'll spend some time doing it, but it's worth it. Because if you have the original recipe, you'll have A for hospital, B for doctors, you date your drug plan, you marry your supplement, or talk about the other side. Before you go on, can I see the book for a second? Somebody wants the title of it. And it'll be much easier for me to just oh, yeah. type it in straight off the. Ellie, would you remind me what it's on top of? Would you remember what that's called? Is that available online? Yeah. It's a guide to health insurance for people with Medicare. All two cents went to making that long title. <laughs> no, but it's a great resource. And if you if you need it, you can send me after class. I can send you a little um, PDF of it, or we can make it available um, to the library for sure. All right, y'all ready for extra crispy? Get it. I went by. That's all I got, man. <laughs> Just kidding. Part C or Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is not a part of Original Medicare. Okay, it's an alternative to Original Medicare. Um, it's private health insurance contracted with the government to manage care instead of Original Medicare. They do have minimum standards, okay? And for the most part, they combine hospital medical and prescription drug coverage in one managed care system. Um, their minimum standard is to cover what A and B without any supplemental would, but they can do so within the limited means of their own managed coverage plan. What that means to a patient is if A covers something or B covers something, um, if someone has original Medicare, they're going to get it covered, right? A covers it, B covers it, you're done. You need XYZ surgery, you need XYZ surgery, both of y'all can have it. 
at the same place or at different places. And it's going to cost about the same as public information. And you, you can know before you go in. Over here, they can say, we will cover that if you get prior authorization or um, approval for whatever you needed to have done. They can also require specific doctors or specialists and um, step therapy, which is trying different types of care, ultimately delaying the initial plan. Um, so the way that it works, again, you can buy one for zero dollars in Texas. Sounds good, huh? Anywhere from zero dollars all the way up to 400, depending on where you live, what's available to you. These plans are not only state specific, they're county specific. So they're either gonna come in the form of an HMO or modified regional PPO. Um, if you buy a Medicare Advantage plan, even if it's zero dollars, even if you get a free fit bed, to have that plan, you surrender your right to original Medicare while you have it, okay? So if someone takes a Medicare Advantage plan, original Medicare will not pay any of your claims. You don't get your money back unless you qualify for extra help, right? You can get some of your premiums back, but if you're over here, you have to keep paying your um, Part B premium if there's one required for you. And that money is just going to go over here to help subsidize the cost of your managed care coverage. You're also not going to get back any of your Part A dollars that you paid into it, but they don't have to go to you. So if someone's over here, A and B doesn't have to pay their claims. It's all up to the private health insurance. Okay. Um, they sound really good because you can get one for zero dollars, but Again, it requires that you surrender your right to original Medicare while you have it. It also requires most, most of the time, most of them in Texas at least, um, that you give up your right to pick your own drug plan. And it sounds like a benefit, and it could be depending on what your needs are, but saying that you get A, B, and D all together means everybody that's on that plan has the same drug coverage. So you're back to not having your own. Um, also, you give up, if you look at the bottom of your paper, there's a little notation that says you can't buy a Medicare. So if you buy a Medicare Advantage plan, even if it's zero dollars, you cannot get a Medigap or Medicare supplement, which means what? You're going to have out of pocket. It's going to come out of your pocket. <laughs> okay. So in Texas, it's anywhere from 18 to uh, I mean, anywhere from zero to 45 for a doctor's visit, 18 to 65 for a specialist, 195 to 595 per night in the hospital, 250 to 850 for an ambulance ride, 20% of durable medical equipment, walker, your seatbelt machine. So you have to go through a vendor that accepts your insurance and still pay 20%. Cancer, cancer treatments. If someone has a cancer diagnosis, they have to, in order to be covered, do the treatment as the plan um, approves and still pay 20% out of pocket. Um, or go over if you want to in private pay, right? <laughs> we can always do that. So on this side of the page, um, sometimes they offer additional benefits, like they might give you um, free dental and vision. Just always read the fine print when you see free on anything or if you see a big zero on anything. Um, I've heard this really cool statement, and I don't know who said it because I'd love to give them credit, but um, the saying goes, if you ever get something that's free, you're the one that's for sale. You are the product, right? Like, think about it. Facebook, free, right? You can get on Facebook for free but they use your data, the things that you look at, and that makes, you're monetized. You give them money, right? So over here, if you have one of these plans, then they get money from over here to help subsidize the cost of your coverage, right? But Medicare no longer has to pay any of your claims. So, um, but you could get some additional benefits. My suggestion would just be to read the fine print for sure and don't make a decision that could impact a significant part of your awesome future 
on um, the little extra bits, like a free gym membership, right? Um, so there are special enrollment and disenrollment periods when someone can come off of one onto another, October 15th through December 7th, <laughs> being one of them. <laughs> but in Texas, there are no Medigap plans currently that don't require medical underwriting once you're out of your golden ticket. So you can come back to original Medicare if you're in the right enrollment or disenrollment period. But in order to be covered beyond that, you would be subject to medical underwriting. So, in review, are you excited? Medicare, it's awesome, right? You do have to make a decision, but there's no pressure. And there are wonderful options for you. Um, you can choose original Medicare. You can sign up three months before your birthday, a month up, technically three hours. You don't want to get a penalty. <laughs> we'll talk about that. It's 10% per year. It's permanent. Can you still get the guarantee issue on the supplement up to three months after your birthday? So the golden ticket is even better than that. You can buy a Medigap six months before your birthday, the month of, and up to five after without answering any health questions. Okay. If you don't know which side of the page you want to be on yet, you've got three months before the month of and three after to pick either one, okay? Um, and so, did that answer you? <laughs> okay. Um, it's a window, right? It's a, it's a golden ticket and it only lasts so long. In Texas, we're blessed. We've got some awesome options. Um, you may want to consider the you know, less than a dozen that's higher rated because that speaks to literally how well they're paying claims. But you have a choice. With original, you'll have A for hospital, B for doctors, you date your drug plan, you marry your supplement, or you can surrender your right to original Medicare while you have it by a Medicare Advantage plan, private health insurance contracted with the government to manage your care instead of original Medicare. Flip over your paper, it's time for a quiz. That's my last joke. Nobody, <laughs> nobody laughed. But you got a little nervous. Okay, no quiz, but I do have two questions for you. The first question, I would like for you to answer out loud if you're able. It's not mandatory. You have a choice. You have the right to say it out loud. Say it proud. So the first one I want you to answer out loud. Y'all okay with that? Maybe. <laughs> you know the answer? It's easy. And the second one is homework. I won't even know if you do it, but I really want you to do it. You ready for number one? Mm -hmm. You gonna say it out loud? Yes. Okay, number one. Are you glad you came? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Internet. I'm just believing. So. <laughs> All right. Number two. Homework. Really do it. What do you want to be when you grow up? My name is Ellie Saul. You can find me on mamabearmedicare.com. Um, thank y'all for having me. We have a, we have a question online. <laughs> and questions, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, questions. So we do have a question online. Uh, can you ever, can you ever go over the 194.50, which I guess is the, the, the hospital stay cost under original Medicare? Medicare? Could it cost more? So, the 19450 is in skilled nursing, okay? And it's per day. And it's either the patient or their Medigap or supplement. The hospital starts after day 60 with 389. And then it doubles after day 90. So yes, the dollar amounts can get bigger and the dollar amounts can be zero depending on the type of coverage that you have, right? To go along with it. Um, that is an excellent question. Any other questions? Okay. So on the supplement side, you have original Medicare and original Medicare covers part and the supplement covers the rest. Okay. On the advantage side, you give up original Medicare. Medicare doesn't pay any of your claims, okay? So the private health insurance company that's contracted with the government 
manages your care and says what you can or can't have and where you can go to have those services. So over here, public information, you can look it up <laughs> and it's universal. Over here, it's a little bit different and you just have to check with your plan to make sure that you've got it intact. So supplement side is more hidden. And on the advantage side, whatever they give you, you have to accept it. Yeah, but you get to pick right before you go in. The thing is with those network considerations, there's no there's no guarantee that they'll keep in that same managed care um, coverage for the whole year even. So those those commitments are not made to the patient directly. Um, so it might be a little bit more difficult to navigate, but you got to think about this. What if someone turns 65 and passes in one week and never used any of their insurance? Which one, which one are they better off with? The one that didn't cost anything, right? Because then their heir gets to have more money. It's just a lot of things to think about. Turning 65 legally is a change of life event. That means no matter when your open enrollment is for your employer, you do what you want. And doing a CMS 40B for a Part B application gives you the same right even if you're over 65. It's a change of life event, y'all. That's like the only other thing equal to it is marrying a partner for life or burying a partner for life or adding a kid into the mix. <laughs> There's only so many, right? Take it seriously. And hopefully today you've got some more tools in your pocket. Make a great decision. If you need help, of course, let me know. So the premium people is on the board side, right? And the co-payment or the co-insurance, what is that? So on this side, you'll see language like co-pay. You might see deductible. Over here, it's deductible. And the deductible is the same for everybody over here. It's, it depends on the plan, right? And the network. Um, and then co-insurance is when it's a percentage. So if you have to pay 20% of the co-insurance instead of co-pay, because it's not a dollar now. But over here, you can get a Medigap to pay for it if you need to. So on this side, is there a, like I know that side is a donor code. And is there any donor code this like on the no more donut home? No more donut. It's part of the legislation that just got passed. In fact, they for the first time ever, we're gonna Medicare is gonna be able to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies, which may not mean anything to you, but it means a lot to a lot of people who are on expensive medications. And they're actually implementing a maximum out of pocket for medicine. That's it's 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 better than it's ever been, and it, it's that's a thing to be one. Some of it with um, insulin. There's a max to how much the copay can be. Um, that starts January one. There are different income levels to be able to get extra help, so they raise those levels by 15%, which just simply means you can make more and still get extra help than ever before. And that starts immediately. Um, pretty pumped about that. <laughs> then starting next year, they've limited how much the premiums can go up, set amount, and implemented the maximum out of pocket. So good stuff, y'all, really good. Yeah. Like on the Medicare side, there is a income limit or resources that you should have to your own thousand, something like that. So for extra help, is there any income limit? Yes. And what is that? It depends on the level of extra help, but if you're anywhere close, I say go ahead and apply. Um, the numbers that I use to begin with would be about $2,500 a month in income for a household of two or about 2,000 a month for one person by themselves. If it's anything close to that or less than that, um, just be aware that if Texas is your home state, which is the best state, I don't know, every state has, okay, but uh, you gotta look, right? 
Um, if you're in Texas, there are also asset limits to consider. So the asset limits are pretty strict. Um, for a single person, the max is a little over $8,000 right now for a couple of 11,000, not counting home with car. So, and if you have more questions about that, let me know. All right. All right. When you see a commercial that says, call this number to see if you qualify, call this number to get with yours for Medicare, call this number to see if you get money back. Do not call that number. Do not give them your information. That's not even an insurance company. So the Joe Namus, right? The JJ Walkers. Those people are leads. They call them lead mills because what they're doing is they're getting your information and your permission for insurance companies to contact you. And then you're the product they sell you. So they sell your information to different companies. If you want to get what's yours for Medicare, public education is where it's at. <laughs> Do not call those one eight hundred numbers unless you just like talking to them. Yeah. Yep. Don't call. Don't call. You can if someone qualifies for Medicaid or extra help. Think about it this way. Can you imagine what kind of awesome insurance would pay you to pay them? Hey, we want to have the honor of being able to pay your medical bills, so we're going to pay you to pay our insurance. So like you just said, when it's free, you are the product. Because There's something else I have going on over there. A lot of people tell you that I'm calling, they call this number and you can say yeah. that. So and they sell your information. So they are getting now what leads. Yep, and they'll sell it forever. So you're more expensive when you first call in. It's like a hot lead. And then there's like a day hold, two day, recycle, 60 day, 90 day, two year. They won't stop. Don't call. All right. So thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you got some good information. In case you want to review or share the information, we did record today's presentation. Um, and we'll post it onto our YouTube page in the next week or so. And we'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to put on those notifications to get more great programs. So thank you guys for joining us and have a great day. Thank you.